there's a lot of misconception about AI. A lot of people are scared about AI. You know, they're worried it's going to take over. So the idea is to first clarify what AI is. It's basically a technology to help us solve bigger problems, right? Every technology that has been invented by man has that role to solve a problem. Hello there and welcome to the My Future Business Show. My name's Rick Nusky, I am your host and on today's show, I could not be more excited to talk about this topic. It is the rise and rise of artificial intelligence. Now, for a lot of people that don't know much about artificial intelligence or otherwise known as AI, by the end of this call, I'm pretty confident that you'll have a very good grasp of AI and all of the upsides to it. And I'm gonna be doing that with no other than author, coach, and keynote speaker, Mr. Manoj Agarwal. Welcome to the show, Manoj. Thank you so much for having me, Rick. It's absolutely Excited a pleasure. Here, yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited to have you here. Now, you and I are going to be talking again about the rapid rise of artificial intelligence and how businesses can embrace it to achieve sustained business growth. Now, customarily, uh, we spend a bit of time talking about you. So where are you calling in from today? I'm in Vancouver, Canada. Fantastic. What do you love about the place? Well, uh, you know, the nature um, we have uh, mountains we have oceans and it's like uh, the most sort of uh, mild climate in canada ah, yes uh, coming coming from a warm country like india you know um the other places in canada they are very very cold very cold so yeah. now i guess you've become acclimatized to the cold weather which one would you prefer um i'm still Climatizing, but uh, I think Vancouver is still like I've been here 25 years, so I love the place anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah I would rather be here than any place else. Now, I know you have a wonderful backstory to tell us, and we'll, we'll talk about that in some uh, in a little while, Manoj. But uh, in terms of uh, travel, I know that you have a love for travel. Tell us a little bit yeah. about where you like to go and what you like to see. Yeah, travel, uh, you know, it just entered my life. Uh, um, since childhood like i used to travel to the himalayas i grew up near the himalayas wow. so um during my uh, college uh, year university school we just used to uh, you know get on our bikes and drive to himalayas the foothills and so i just loved that um, experience of going to new places discovering new cultures and cuisines and whatnot yes. um so yeah i've been to uh, new zealand i haven't been to australia which is you know i i, I really want to go there and uh, I just like to explore new places and because each new sensory um, uh, sort of uh, emotion you feel, mm -hmm. it, it adds to a little bit of your you know, understanding of the world around you. Yes, absolutely. Well, look, the door's always open here in Australia for you if you need somewhere to be. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, certainly don't miss out on it because, you know, don't tell everybody about Australia, but it's a wonderful place to visit. Even absolutely. A better, yeah, better yeah, place yeah, to yeah. stay. <laughs> now, in terms of movies, do you like movies? Do you like music? What do you What do you like to do? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, generally, I like uh, documentaries rather than uh, fiction movies. Yes, uh, some yes. fiction movies I watch, but mostly documentaries. Um, because my work, because um, I like to read and understand like different modalities, different yes. uh, topics, different structures, because again, that helps me, uh, you know, um, figure out how to implement uh, these type of technologies in the real world. Yes, well, we are obviously going to take a deep dive into that. Me yeah. personally, I love the Sir David Attenborough uh, nature documentaries. You're talking about yeah. something a little different, aren't you? You're more about, uh, you know, uh, No, I technology. like nature as well. Oh, yeah. uh, so I'm, I'm like a polymath, like, uh, you know, it depends on the uh, the time of the day and the mood, like whatever, whatever I feel like learning about. So I yeah, just yeah. pull up. Yeah. yeah, no, look, I know that it must be important for you to have um, breaks away from the work that you do. How important do you find it is for you to, I guess, reset and recharge by watching a movie? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So I, I have um, one uh, coach, he's, he's an Olympic champion, and he says uh, one thing is like, if you cannot control your day, then you cannot control your life. So meaning you have to structure your day in a way Yep. That gives you the maximum energy for the maximum output. So I, I do meditation in the morning, yoga, then walk in nature. Um, so like I structure my day so that I can start with those things. And then before the whole like sort of, you know, the commotion of the, the workplace. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Now, tell me a little bit. I think for, for the sake of context, Manoj, I'd love to learn a little bit about what child life was like for you. Can you recall it? And was there anything that you'd love to share with us? 
Yeah, child life was quite difficult, uh, you know, very eventful, very um, exciting as well, but uh, eventful in the sense that I grew up in a troubled home uh, in a small city mm. and I started work at um, at 15. My career started in working in a factory yep. and um, I was working for $2 a day, uh, six days a week, wow. uh, 12 hours a day. Yep. So that, that's, that was the sort of the experience I had, but I learned like that was really hard grueling, grueling work, but I learned a lot there about, you know, obviously hard work, about precision, about scale about uh you know um how systems work together yep. so yeah it, it was a it was quite an ex uh, interesting experience now you talked earlier about coaches and and i look at in my formative years when i was growing up i had a particular person in my life that i really looked towards and did you have anybody like that in your world when you were growing up um you know i have uh, had like a really amazing teachers but specifically one teacher in um uh in my seventh grade, uh, she, uh, you know, she really recognized some of my potential and encouraged me. Um, you know, uh, as I said, like, so my, the factory that I'm talking about, uh, that was my dad's factory. So dad, oh, my yes. dad raised me as, as, a, as a factory worker, basically, uh, putting me in those situations to be resilient. Um, of course, I hated it and I still don't understand <laughs> it right now, but that's how it, it came out to be. And, um, you know, in that aspect, like I understand what he was trying to do. And then I always um, also, um, I got help from um, uh, some other people, like, you know, I, I consider them my parents in, uh, in many ways. Um, yes. so, so these are uh, my, my ex-wife's parents. Right. And so they helped me um, in the time of need as well. So they, they have been all these, like, people who have helped me in multiple ways, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I, I don't even have the time to list the names of yeah. <laughs> all that. Uh, but then, you know, you, you have all these authors, your books, ancient wisdom. Yep. Um, so you many. Know, so you collect, yeah, collect all that from all that um, sort of intellect from multiple places and put it together, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for your feedback, Manuch. Now, tell me a little bit about, it seems to me like your, your father had a, a, a large focus on discipline and routine. Do you think that's yeah. what you took away from the experience and how important is discipline and routine in your days now? Yeah, I think that was it. Like, you know, discipline, routine, uh, perseverance, like, you know, not giving up and just like, no matter what, is going on in your personal life just keep moving on with your professional life yeah i mean i don't really uh like that um but uh that's the way i was brought up and um uh what was the second question no i just wanted to learn about discipline and routine because you've, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. touched on both yeah discipline. routine yeah 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 routine um so okay so r routine wise as i said like i think uh, there are some core things that i make sure i have m in my day which is, um, as I said, like uh, taking care of myself first, like yoga and meditation and walk in nature. Yep. And then having some, uh, you know, a few conversations with the uh, prospects, with clients, with, you know, these podcast interviews, because what happens is the, the more conversations you can have, the more uh, bigger audience you can reach, the, the, you know, the more impact you can create with what you have to uh, share with the world, right? Yes, great. Um, this is not to say like to make more sales or whatever, like just sharing the insights is also a form of giving and receiving. Cause when I give something to somebody, it comes back to me in some other way. And in, in tenfold usually. Now, thank you very much again for the, uh, the feedback. Now, in terms of when you moved away from your father's business, can you recall what your very first entrepreneurial experience was and would you mind sharing it with us? Yeah. So, well, I mean, what happened was, so I, 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 I got married in India and then I, uh, came over to Canada and uh, you know when I was uh, in the early years it was still my um, my mindset was employee mindset so I just wanted to be secure yeah and I tried to find a job and got a job very quickly and then I lost the jobs very quickly as well like uh, this was dot com bus time then September 11th then uh, Gulf War so that uh, sense of job security did not last long. Mm -hmm. Then I started my consulting company back in 2001. And then I started working with multiple organizations, software companies. And as I was doing that work, I had always had a, like, you know, this, this uh, urge to do something 
uh, on the side which uh, doesn't need my time as much because I want to spend my time with my kids or so I've always uh, tried to build something on the side and the first business I tried was to sell sporting goods on eBay ah okay so um so I I came I I come from a town which is like world famous for sporting goods it's a very very small town right. but um pretty much any sport you can think of like the pro pro sports the the uh now uh, there's a lot of competition from china but um back the, back uh, about 10 20 years ago mm-hmm. a lot majority of the pro equipment used to come from that city so i i had connections there so you know basically i said hey you know we have all these major brands uh, factory outlets so i can buy it from there and sell it on ebay mm-hmm. and it worked for a um, couple of years and i made good profit but then i knew nothing about supply chain i knew nothing about like warehousing uh, you know uh, yeah. so uh, yeah it, that was um, <laughs> a big lesson to learn. You yeah, know? I bet. No, it's, it's funny how we you know, we all start at the start, don't we? And we've got so yeah. much. We don't know what we need to learn until we need to learn it. And certainly by the end of today's call, I'm hopeful that people will walk away with a, a very healthy understanding of AI. Now, tell me a little bit about uh, your educational and professional background. What have you What have you achieved um, thus far? Yeah. So, um, well, my education is from India, not like spectacular education from Ivy League or anything. So, just uh, basic uh, bachelor's and m- uh, master's degree, and um, then I learned pretty much everything on the job. Um, yep. Yep. So uh, today I have four patents in artificial intelligence. Um, uh, produced about five hundred million dollars in in value for clients like Microsoft and IBM, Pearson Education. Um, impacted ten million lives and. Uh, uh, one of my projects, they actually got mentions from Obama and Bill Gates. Yes. So yeah. So um. So uh, so that's sort of um, where I stand today with uh, with the work that I have done. Yeah, great. Thank you again for your feedback. Absolutely loving this call now. Uh, we will talk about specifically the types of people that you've been working with along the way. But um, let's I guess shift gears and and start to talk about AI. What is it? Explain okay. to us from a fundamental level what AI sure. actually means. Sure. See, um, our our human mind is a pattern recognition uh, recognition machine, right? So, I'll, um, I'll I'll give you a quick example. So, let's yes, say please. if you are a child and you touch a hot stove, um, your mind will record that data and will say, "Oh, you know, I found a pattern not to ever touch the stove because it hurts me otherwise." Right. <laughs> yep. Now that one data point becomes a, a, a pattern in your mind now let's say the same child is outside in a in, in the antarctica in and very tundra, tundra environment very cold uh, there's a you know wind chill factor there you know he, the the child is wearing uh, heat resistant gloves um, so in all this cold if he touches the stove it's not going to feel hot it's actually going to feel pleasant right yep so now the mind will recognize oh there are variations in this pattern so if we add more parameters then we have to like change our uh, pattern recognition so now two patterns have been recognized by the mind right yep now our mind is not capable of handling more than 10 20 variables in any situation so let's say if i want to say hey i want to predict the weather uh in the next 14 days and the weather uh, relies on like thousands of different parameters like you know the earth's movement moon's movement sun's, data points you know so many data points so the machine is able to so our mind is obviously not going to even try to figure out how to find a pattern here right yep but when we feed all that data into the machine the machine can very minutely pick out those patterns and can recognize or oh, based on 50 years of historical data uh, what i'm looking at today it is it is going to be rainy in the next 14 days or whatever. Yep. So that basically is AI. It's offloading and enhancing our ability to see the pattern in real life, which we our mind is not able to see. But it's does like, that make sense? It's, absolutely. It's like forecasting, isn't it? It is It is sort of like forecasting, but again, you don't have to think about it as forecasting because AI can think backwards as well, like in uh-huh. the past, like because yep. it can find patterns. You can say, hey, Find me common patterns between the Napoleon, uh, Napoleon's, uh, you know, war strategy and the U.S. Uh, military war strategy. Yeah. So it, artificial intelligence can actually analyze the data because it, for for us, 
will ha like if if you if you were to ask a question like that somebody will have to do deep research somebody who is passionate about napoleon french history somebody is passionate about us military history yep. but ai can like actually do that like do that quickly. for you yeah. yeah wow it's like having an, another brain, another brain almost now yeah, tell yeah. me when did ai actually start out what was its genesis and was it invented by a particular person how did it come about well i mean see um AI has been around for for decades, like 1960s, 1970s. Really? It has been called by different names, data analytics, you know, like uh, fuzzy law, like fuzzy logic. Many, many, many different names, many incarnations, many branches. And um, uh, the the true sort of uh, you know, there is a guy named Andrew Nug. Mm. He uh, he has the title of father of AI. How? How accurate that is or not, I don't know, because there are many um, prominent people, you know, a lot of them are employed by Google who yeah. actually are the sort of the brainchild behind this. Mm -hmm. but, the, but the key thing you have to recognize, it's basically what they did was they really try to understand how the mind works, our mind works, and they tried to simulate that environment in the machines. As yes. I said, like, it just, they just started noticing, okay, how does the mind learn? Because in, inside our minds, we have neurons, and those neurons pick up the stimulus like eyesight and touch and whatnot. Yep. And then based on certain stimulus, it learns that, oh, okay, you know, given this situation, this is the outcome. So they replicated that same functionality in the machine. Yes, fantastic feedback. Now, I think about data points and I think about the likes of Google or Microsoft and every time we use their browsers and we give a search um, request either via audio or written text. Is that the way that we're populating machines? Yeah, it's a, see, data is everywhere. Uh, it has always been there. Now we have been producing more and more because of our mobile devices. Yes. Our um, Everything is smart. These are smart fridges, smart cars you know, smartphones, smartwatches, they're all producing data at, at like set, a sec, some of them every 15 seconds, some of them wow. five seconds, uh, some of them five minutes. You know, there are sensors all over the globe, uh, you know, monitoring uh, ice sheet thickness, you know, wind capacity, lots and lots and lots of data is floating around. So yes, when you search a query, it's part of that data set. But you are, as humanity, we are creating humongous amount of data right now. Oh, yes. Yes. And it doesn't unwind. It certainly just compounds, doesn't it? Now, tell yeah, me, exactly. how, how was it that you came to be an expert in AI and what triggered your interest in it? Well, um, so what happened was, you know, uh, around 2010, 12, um, I, uh, due to some, some of my personal challenges, I um, went into depression and mm. almost like, almost like suicidal. So I wanted to find some solutions to my mental health yes, problems. Yes. Yep. And so I found meditation and spirituality and I sort of going started deeper into my mind and mm -hmm. you know, learning about neuroscience and philosophy and all that. And then during that time I was doing artificial intelligence. So I've been doing uh, AI projects since 2005, 2006. And um, then as I started going deeper into the mind, I start to see the continuum between the mind and how AI uh, works. Yes. And so, yes. so the so the real passion started that you know if I can fix myself um, using meditation with AI, um, is there a way I can use AI to help people experience similar sensation as a meditation? And so that became my sort of, you know, uh, obsession with AI as well. That's an interesting segue. You know, thank you for sharing this. This is really a great conversation now. Tell us for the sake of context, Manoush, um, about some of the big businesses that you've actually helped utilize AI. You know, you're talking the likes of Microsoft, IBM and so forth. Tell us a yeah. little bit about your journey there. Yeah, yeah. So um, so with Microsoft, we didn't, that was a project. We didn't do uh, any AI, but there was heavy, like a lot of data. We helped them build a, a, a a system for their global enterprise licenses uh, customers. So they, yep. this is all the global, like large uh, corporations that buy from Microsoft. So that that system was processing like about 30, 40 billion dollars worth of transactions every day. Wow. Or not, not every day, sorry, every year, sorry, every yep, year. Yep, yep. Um, and then uh, with the, we work with a company called Pearson Education, which is one of the largest uh, textbook publishing company. And for them, we created um, a learning management system to uh, help uh, le kids learn like from K 
to 12 and university courses mm -hmm. so that project was uh, they we scaled it from 0 to 5 million users within 5 years and it was producing like 400 million dollars every year uh, in revenue amazing uh, and then we created uh, like a custom orthotic devices this was purely like computer vision ai uh, with 3d printing and that orthotic device was um, white labeled by a 43 billion dollar uh, german company so yeah i mean th these are some of the interesting projects like we have many many more case studies but it's been really fun to go into different areas different industries and use these technologies you talk about it being fun you know it, you would have significant influence over the direction of organizations with your skill set which is a, a fast emerging disruptive industry to say the least now mm -hmm. how does that make you feel when you see some of the rewards that come from ai and businesses adopting them well it's, uh, first of all i feel like uh, you know uh, and this is one of the reasons why i i'm doing a lot of podcasts uh, and uh, talking about it because there's a lot of misconception about AI. A lot of people are scared about AI, you know, they're worried it's going to take over. Um, and I feel like there's just a lot of misinformation. So the the idea is to first clarify what AI is, just like I tried to do. Thank it's basically yes. technology to help uh, find patterns and help us solve bigger problems, right? Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. the now that's where, you know, the, the every technology Every every technology that has been invented by man has that role to solve a problem. Yes. Now, the, the thing is, AI is such a radically transformative technology. It's going to have social implications, economic implications. Uh, and then the danger is that just like with any other technology, mm. if it falls into the hand of a, of a mad person, a bad actor, bad actor, it can it can harm us. Now, all that is given. I completely get it. I understand yes. that. Yep. Right. Yep. But. I may I make a few points. First, AI has already been around for decades, so it's it's not like it just sneaked up uh, sneaked up on us. Yep. And one day we we say, oh, okay, no, we are, we can't. Yeah. So the, the 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 thing is that people who realize the value of AI, like Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, they started using it in 1990s when the internet was just like coming out, right? Mm -hmm. And utilizing the power of AI, they became the richest people on this planet within 10, 15, 20 years. Yes. Crazy. Yeah. Right. So now this technology is being democratized and it is coming into the hands of common people. Now, instead of helping them realize the power that has been given to them, if, if people are scared, they will not be using it and, you know, they'll miss out on this opportunity. Right. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit then, because I'm intrigued by your comments with regard to Elon Musk. Why was it then that he's now being seen to ask for it to be slowed down exactly uh, more precisely in relation to chat GPT? Yeah. See, the thing is that um, we, what happens in in other people's mind, we cannot uh, tell, you know, why Control. they think yep. that. Way. Now, if you look at the facts, he is the one who was who started OpenAI in the first place. Right. right? Yep. Uh, then he resigned from uh, OpenAI, citing that uh, Tesla is inventing their own AI, which is even more advanced than OpenAI's, and there's going to be a conflict of interest. His mm -hmm. own company invented uh, self-driving cars, which literally killed people. Yeah. Right. Yep. So yep. He, his other company, Neuralink, is is trying to put uh, chips in human mind. So. Um, to, to, and again, the way the news cycle works, again, news is also controlled by AI. It bubbles up the news, which is more sensational. So we see on the news headline, oh, Elon Musk is saying stop AI. But if you look under the covers, there are so many shades of gray, like I yeah, just mentioned, course. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so but the idea is like, if you don't have the right information, you're just going to believe the misinformation. I'm not saying I'm right or anybody else is wrong. The point is to share the information and then let other people make their choice, right? Absolutely. I, I can't help but think of, uh, I think it's called Skynet and the Terminator movie. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think we can either embrace or be absolutely fearful of it. Do you think we should be trying to strike a balance between the two? Yeah, yeah. I see every technology that is powerful, like, you know, let's talk about like uh, even fire, you know, it's mm. fire is regulated. Like we can't just like, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. start a fire willy nilly anywhere. Yeah, right? Anywhere. Like, yep. Yeah. So, um, so I mean, 
AI is such huge implications, humongous for future generations. Like this has never happened before in human history, right? So mm-hmm. this this technology, of course, need to be somehow controlled, regulated. You know, some some agreements need to be in place. But the depiction that AI is going to take over is the is the one that I cannot wrap my head head around. Like, because I I I have never seen any other species wage war against each other. No, absolutely. Yeah. So when we say you know. When we, when I hear people say, "Oh, you know, this AI will take over," then I tell, when I, then I think about like, only humans are jealous of each other. You know, only humans yep. have um, uh, like this uh, notion of uh, ambition and and taking over the world. I don't think there is any other species that displays that, that character. Yeah. Yeah, we we see a lot of uh, talk, at least in my local areas, that certain governments, local governments, especially at this stage, are looking to ban the likes of ChatGPT because they they are so fearful and they don't really understand it. I think yeah. this this call is going to help educate people and I guess bring it out of the shadows because it doesn't really matter where you look now, Manoj. It yeah. seems to me that there are literally hundreds of new businesses starting up saying hey look i've got this ai bookmaker i've got this ai artwork generator i've got this ai this that and the other tell me yeah. your views on um on those new businesses and whether or not they're exciting and what, what that is do? the only kind of business there's going to be um right. i don't yeah. so so the guy we were talking about earlier who's considered the father of ai mm-hmm. his quotation is that ai is the new electricity okay so yeah. if you so AI is the new electricity. Yeah, wow, that's that's yeah. really amazing. I, I I don't know. Do you think it's going to? I mean, because I've actually dabbled in AI. I've purchased a few software products that help me generate content pretty quickly. Must I say? Yeah. I'm pretty blown yeah. away. But yeah. is it? Do you think it has the potential to make us lazy? Um. See, we are. <laughs> in fact, I think we are lazy. Yeah, um, <laughs> inherently you know, lazy. Uh, <laughs> like. Uh, the re- why do you think we invent things? Because we want to be lazy. Yes, yeah, that's great the reason answer. we invent technology. I yeah, mean, I think... start from the remote control. Why did we invent it? You know, we don't want to get up from the sofa <laughs> and change the channel. <laughs> yeah, and that's back in the you know very early days. Now, do you think that AI is going to create jobs or or make many of them obsolete? Um, it will create jobs and it will, uh, you know, make other ones obsolete now the mm. people who are going to lose their job they may they will need to upskill you know that's why again w- that's one of the reasons why it's very important for people to understand this embrace it and that i believe is the bigger danger that people are sleeping and they're not gonna actually understand it and and then in three to five years they're gonna wake up and they're gonna say oh my god the world has passed me by and i'm it's just you know you you see these cycles right like if you go in 1990s, if you if you went and asked somebody, hey, do you do you think you should get on the internet? Do you need a website? And they'll be like, what the hell is a website? I don't think I need a website, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but then um, in 1997, uh, Jeff Bezos started a website called Amazon, and yep. then he became the richest person in on the planet. And then and then people said, oh, what the hell? How did he become so rich? Because then they never paid attention to what was happening, right? And then. Yep. The iPhone came, the app starting to build up. And again, I'm not saying I'm smart. I was smart enough to ca- catch any of those waves. No, I kept no. sitting on the sideline. But now this is the wave that I'm catching on AI. I'm asking other people to catch it. It's almost like an industrial uh, evolution slash revolution. Yeah, yeah. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm very excited. Now I'm wondering, um, we've, we've talked a, a little bit about, I guess, government regulation, and, and, and I think a lot of that would help to um, build trust in AI. What are you doing to help um, people start to trust AI can be controlled? See, um, I always uh, say take baby steps first. Um, yep. AI can be controlled is a big, big, uh, big question. I, I don't even like to tackle that, like how AI can be controlled. Nobody knows. Uh, and I certainly have no idea how it will be controlled right now. Yep. Uh, my my point about that is if we don't let the public use it, yep. then obviously we are already being controlled, right, by by few people. You see? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. So the point is not to stop it because it's already being controlled by a handful of people. But if we let everybody use it, then it will be less controlled by you know by a few people. 
Yeah, are those bad actors potentially as well? I yeah. love this yeah. feedback. I'm really learning a great deal in a short amount of time now. Tell me, I, I, I see um, AI creating amazing artwork. In fact, I have to say, I love the artwork behind you. It's mm. beautiful. I, and, I, and, I, and I see incredible images of shoes that are based on game characters and things mm-hmm. like that. What are some of the uh, AI applications that have impressed you? Um, see, uh, we humans like to express ourselves, right? So yep, yep. we uh, write, we write poetry, we write, we dance, we sing, we create music. So you can see like when um, the medium becomes richer, we try to utilize it to create a richer experience. Meaning, you know, when we have like uh, paint, paint color, then we mm-hmm. use painting. Then we had radio as a medium. We started talking uh, on shows. Then came the television. Then we started acting, right? So now AR, VR, we are becoming more immersive in that. So in that sense, humans always like to express with all the um, sensory uh, organs that we have. Yep. Yep. Um, so now uh, the, the cool thing is like, you know, we will be able to create these multi-sensory uh, experiences and the other thing will be hyper personalization because as i said ai can recognize minute patterns and so with industrialization what has happened uh, was that since we needed to produce everything in mass quantity we started to create very mini buckets of uh, of of commodities and said okay you can only buy shoes in 12 sizes that's it yeah because because you know because i cannot make like custom shoe size for everyone that's not going to work but mm-hmm. with AI and automation, I can say, okay, you know, my shoe size is 11, 11 and uh, three quarters, <laughs> yep, and yep. I want it custom made. So please do that, and you'll get it in an hour, right? So yeah. these kind of things will be possible, which were not possible before, and it's already happening right now. Like you, you buy, you know, if you sit in a Tesla, you will see the future already. It's there, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely for sure and certain. I, I love this idea of 3D printers and AI working together and being able to custom order. It's a, it's almost a brave new world situation. Now, tell us a little bit about your Brains 500 Global Award. How did that come about? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, so, you know, um, the, the key thing is after talking about this for a long time, I find a very interesting thing is that our world is so much controlled by AI because now... Again, in first time in human in human history, history mm-hmm. we can be our own journalists and we can be our own publishers of news, right? Yeah. Yep. So when you publish the news uh, consistently, you get the attention of the right people. Does it make sense? So it's yes, like absolutely. Yeah. So it's like all these platforms like Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, they are AI algorithms. And once you start to understand AI algorithms and when you start to understand humans, then you then you start to create your own audience and start to talk about things. When you do get the attention of that audience, somebody from there says, hey, this guy is talking sense, so let him recognize as a global thought leader. So that's sort of what happened where I got the attention of this magazine called um, Brains and they they study like some of the the biggest names on the list mm. on which I'm nominated. There is a uh, co-founder of Netflix, co-founder of Mind Valley, like best-selling authors, like really, really high quality people. Secretary so, generals and uh, mm. what is their Nobel Prize, Nobel Peace Prize winners? Yeah, that, that was my talk at, uh, at the UN. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Look, yeah. I, I just can, I can only imagine what that, you know what that's like for you i see just like the light behind you when you talk about this topic you light up and it's important that we have people like you certainly sharing your message with the world now i also know that you have some involvement uh, with blockchain i'm wondering what's the relationship between blockchain and ai do they work together yeah yeah see all these technologies are sort of like um complementary in in many ways so mm-hmm. i'll give you an example so um so like ai is an extension of your mind it can help you uh be more creative and sort of think faster, better, right? Yep, yep. The other aspect in human and human life is trust. So in order for us to do any transaction, we need to trust each other that will you keep the your end of this uh, bargain with me or and will I do the same, right? Mm-hmm. And so this trust takes a lot of time to establish between human beings. Yes. And lack of trust leads to 
I mean, I will go. I will go as far as saying like seventy percent of our economy is based on the fact that we cannot trust each other. Yes. Isn't okay. It, isn't... Like banks, insurance. Um, you know, like all this infrastructure is built because we can't trust each other. Right. Sad, isn't it? Yeah. But blockchain is a technology that can digitize trust. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Okay. Look, I've certainly seen it. Mm -hmm. So now you can see a, a world where you don't have to like settle so much on uh, on you know us trying to establish trust, uh, and uh, and yeah, it if if blockchain can help us create more trust and maintain that trust, uh, yeah, that can transform life itself. And then you can couple that with AI and say, okay. How can AI help us find more trustworthy people, establish trust with them, put it on the blockchain, and blah blah blah, right? And build relationships, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I know that you have some coaching and consultancy services available. I'm wondering if you could share with us who is your ideal client, and what is probably the best way to connect with you should they want to learn more and work with you? See, uh, our ideal clients are people um, generally people who are innovators and risk takers, because as I said, there's a lot of noise. And a lot of people are sort of standing still, or they're early just early adopters. Yeah, so we are looking for early adopters who are, are who have like you know a passion for AI, who have funded uh, initiatives, and who are not just saying oh, okay, you know, like I want to know how to write a better prompt, but they truly want to transform their business and their life, and they want to get ahead in this AI wave. Those are the people we are looking for. Absolutely. So uh, tell me, um, what is the, the domain address of your website and what will visitors find when they get there? So you can go to Manu Jagarwal or uh, Manu Jagarwal, my first name, last name dot com. Mm -hmm. And then my um, uh, company website is tetranoodle dot com. Uh, the company site is more like a little bit professional, not as sexy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. the idea is that we we are offering um, information resources about ai we are offering ways for people to experience exponential growth meaning high high growth sustainable high growth meaning a lot of people say you know ex exponential growth is not possible it's not sustainable then i say look at the rise of apple look at the rise of amazon that's what's called sustainable exponential growth right yes absolutely and that sits on on top of ai so if you Start to understand that, and if we help you, you can start to experience that in your life and your business. I mean, I'm not saying that you you can become the next Amazon, but I think you can really uh, accelerate your growth once you have these tools in your uh, tool chest. Well, I tell you what, this has been an eye-opening call for me, Manoj, and uh, anybody who's on this call today, no matter where you see this call, as per normal, you're going to find the link back to Manoj's wonderful work, his websites, and, and certainly reach out to him if you want to make that connection and start to learn how to harness this powerful a new wave called AI. And with that, Manoj, thank you so very much for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks.